Today, BP announced it would hold off trying to cap the oil leak using a smaller containment dome for another couple of days. Since the oil well exploded three weeks ago in the Gulf of Mexico, 15 million liters of oil have flooded the sea. So far, no one has figured out a way to clean up the mess. David Pryor is a Canadian who's developed an oil skimming technology that could make a big difference. And he joins me now from Halifax to tell us all about it. So, David, first of all, tell us about this technology. Okay, this is a, uh, an advanced uh, form of an established technology that's actually uh, been around for 40 years. It's uh, probably the best mechanical skimming system, but it was unable to operate in high waves or ice, such as in the Arctic. Our breakthrough has been to um, make improvements to it that allow it to work in very rough water, uh, that, uh, rougher, much rougher than what uh, has stopped the uh, cleanup operations in the Gulf of Mexico. In December, uh, in China, we uh, tested in our test tank with a fairly large model uh, and uh, real oil, heavy oil. Uh, the test went exceedingly well. Okay, and how does it work exactly? You mentioned it's a mechanical skimmer. Yes, it's, a, it's basically a flat bottom barge or boat uh, with a hole under, in the bottom underneath the water. And the oil goes under the boat. The boat just runs through the oil slick. The oil goes under. It's always trying to get back to the surface because oil floats. And when it comes to the hole, it floats up inside the hole, which leads it to the inside of the boat, where the pumps can transfer it to storage. Interesting. So does it work on the same sort of principle as like a gravy fat skimmer? No, that's the opposite. That's a, uh, what they call a weir skimmer. And the problem with them is that they can only work in calm water. When, when, uh, when the waves are there, they end up getting swamped with water instead of oil. So how does it suck up the oil? You mentioned some vacuums as well. Well, our system's a little bit different in that we use a vacuum pump to create a column of water that's above the ocean, much, in much the, way, the same way that a straw works. When you put the straw in the coke and then you suck on the straw, the coke goes up the straw. And that's what we do. And then when the oil comes to our, the opening to the straw, it floats up inside the straw. Gotcha. So it's pretty incredible that you mentioned that uh, it works during rough seas and waves, which is some of the problems that they're having over there in the Gulf of Mexico. So what kind of uh, changes did you make? How did you adapt the technology to make that work? Well, the, the, the original idea uh, had the opening in the, uh, in the hole in the bottom of the boat maybe a, a meter below the surface. To get the oil to go down that deep, they had to use a conveyor belt and pull the oil down and then scrape it off at the opening to the hole. That conveyor belt is, uh, dis is, is wrecked by the waves. The waves uh, prevent it from working properly. Because we've placed our water column above the surface of the ocean, we don't need a conveyor belt. The water only has to go under a little bit, and it doesn't need the conveyor belt. So that means we can work in very rough water and at much, much higher speeds. Right. Now, have you done any real-world tests with this? We uh, are not allowed to use oil, but uh, off this uh, point of land here, Last October, we did uh, sea trials in very rough water, um, considering the size of the boat, it was very small. And we used oranges, because oranges are similar to oil, they barely float, uh, they're very difficult to capture, and uh, we had a 100% success rate in one meter waves in a very small six meter boat. Wow. Now, have you gotten in touch with authorities and people who are in charge of the cleanup there? Is there any chance that maybe your technology might be used? We have, uh, they have a website set up looking for new uh, ideas. We submitted uh, about 12 days ago. Um, haven't heard from them, of course. Uh, we do work with a company who have 100 staff inside their command center, and their vice president told me that BP is not looking for alternative technologies at this point. They just want to use the same old stuff they've been using for 40 years, which is unfortunate because it doesn't work. Right. Now, what would it actually take to get such a huge effort underway using your technology? Well, they should uh, fly me and my test boat down to Louisiana overnight, uh, try it out, have naval architects design it for five or six hours, and then issue orders to maybe two or three hundred shipyards around the Gulf to uh, build barges that would strap on to supply ships and uh, fishing vessels and be towed through the oil slick. They could have a fleet out there within four or five days. And when you say a fleet, how many boats would you be looking at? I, I would recommend they have 250 ships, 500 barges. Each ship with our system 
can clean up four square miles per day. So you could be cleaning up, um, you know, a thousand square miles per day. Wow, it's a really great invention. So I hope maybe that, you know, this brings more attention to it and, and they get to use it. Well, we're, we're getting a lot of attention, but unfortunately BP calls the shots and uh, BP is not interested in uh, new ideas. We love new ideas. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, David. Oh, you're welcome. David Pryor is the inventor of the Extreme Spill Technology. He joined me today from Halifax. You know, we've featured so many different things on Daily Planet over the last, you know, couple weeks since the oil spill. We've done peat moss, we've done tea bags, we've done dog hair. This is a really promising technology, so it's a really big shame that it's not even being considered. Well, the question is why, because he, he said, you know, they're not interested in new things. But in a way that uh, it puzzles me, because why wouldn't they? If there was something that, you know, a co the company wants to clean it up as fast as possible, not only for the ultimate cost, but for their reputation. So why they wouldn't look at things like this is beyond me, really. But it is frustrating, because I, I, I feel like every time there's an oil spill, we hear about all kinds of techniques that could be used on the next oil spill, and then the next oil spill comes and it's the same thing.